Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue our discussion on EMC consideration. On the previous few video, we have discussed the effect of electric or capacity coupling. Today, I suggest seven methods to reduce the electric or capacity coupling. This will be the part eight series discussion on EMC consideration. The earlier on discussion on EMC, okay, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you are keen to find out more information on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by like and subscribe. Nowadays, it is getting more and more difficult and also challenged to have a technical discussion in YouTube. To be very frank, it is not that well received anymore. So guys, please support Technical Guy by like and subscribe this video. Thank you so much, guys. How can we reduce the electric or capacity coupling? There are seven methods. The first method is to increase the conductor separation. So this is the conductor one, and this is the conductor two. If we can increase the separation between the conductor one and conductor two, as you can see from here. Okay, so the diagram on the left, they are close together. The diagram on your right, they are further away. So if we are able to increase the separation, okay, the coupling coefficient actually reduce, as you can see here. So C1 has a better coupling coefficient as compared to C2, which is not desired. Hence, the first solution is to put them as far as possible. However, nowadays it's getting more and more difficult to put them space apart. Okay, because we want to make the device as small as possible. Hence, this may not be a feasible solution. Second, okay, we can also reduce the mutual capacitance by using a ground plane. Okay, so let's take a look on this diagram here. So this is the first conductor and second conductor. So underneath the conductor, there is actually a ground plane. Okay, imagine. This conductor one actually coupled over to the conductor two. Okay, so with a ground pin, beside the coupling from conductor one to conductor two, the, the coupling actually also occur from conductor one to the ground. Okay, so this actually will reduce some of the coupling coefficient. Okay, so this is just pure physics. Okay, if we have a ground pin, okay, instead of 100% coupled from conductor one to conductor two, some actually may conduct over to the ground. So this actually reduces the coupling coefficient from conductor one to conductor two. So this is the second method. Okay, so this is the equation that we have discussed on the previous video. So what happened here is if we can reduce this C12, okay, as mentioned here, if we can reduce this C12 to zero, okay, we actually reduce the noise that couple over from conductor one to conductor two. Here again, this is highly unlikely to happen. Okay, we can't totally remove away the coupling coefficient from conductor one to conductor two. Okay, so the method to solve, as suggested earlier on, is to increase the separation or have a ground plane underneath the two conductor. So take a look on this diagram here. Okay, this axis here show the separation between the conductor. Okay, you can see from here. Okay, when the spacing actually increase, the coupling coefficient actually reduce. You can see over here. And now if we can add a ground underneath the two conductor, okay, the coupling coefficient further reduce. Hence, if we can apply rule number one and rule number two, we try to space them as far as possible. And then if we are can have a ground plane underneath the conductor, we actually reduce the coupling coefficient between conductor one and conductor two. Next, okay, we can reduce the R of conductor one and two. Okay, if we take a look on this formula here that we have 
discussed on the previous video. Okay, if we can reduce the R, okay, we can also reduce the noise couple over from conductor one to conductor two. So if we can reduce by 10 times, okay, you can see that the noise actually also will be reduced. So the rule of thumb is not to use higher resistance than is strictly necessary for the circuit to function. So this is the rule of thumb. Fourth, okay, if we can do some shielding or some screening. Okay, so take a look on this diagram here. Okay, so the diagram on your left is without any shielding or screening. Okay, so you can see that all the coupling actually take place from conductor one to conductor two. So the diagram on the right is with some shielding. So the shielding actually tied to the ground. So instead of all the coupling from conductor one to conductor two, some actually were coupled over to the shield and they actually grounded. So you can see from here, okay, we can actually reduce the noise by reducing the coupling coefficient from conductor one to conductor two, okay, by provide a shielding that is close to the noise source. So instead of all 100% coupled over from conductor one to conductor two, most of them will actually were coupled over to the shield and the shield is actually tied to the ground and all the noise will be shunned to the ground. So this is method number four. Method number five, is to use the balance circuit. Okay, so you can see this is the your noise source. Okay, so this is your differential or your balance circuit. Okay, so they are 180 degrees out of phase. Okay, when the noise couple over, they are actually all in phase. So for differential, okay, when they actually are in phase, the noise is actually effectively removed. Okay, because under the differential, we actually minus away the signal between these two. Okay, and then one of them is actually 180 degree out of phase. Okay, so but the noise actually couple, they are actually all in phase. So under the differential or balance circuit, okay, we can actually effectively reduce the noise. However, if you take a look on this diagram here, okay, under differential, okay, your estate size, okay, which means that your PCB actually will be increased. Okay, as you can see from here, instead of just one track, you actually need to have dual track. Okay, so this is the minus point by implement a balanced circuit or differential circuit. Okay, number six, okay, you can screen your cable. Okay, for example, the diagram on your left is without any screening. So the noise actually coupled directly to your circuit. Okay, and then it may some affect your output, for example, for this case here. However, with some screening, Okay, so what you can do is you ground on both sides. When the noise couple over, actually it provides a path for the noise to shun it to the ground instead to your original signal. Okay, so this is also another method to protect against the noise source. Last but not least, okay, we can reduce your DVNDT as much as possible. The key idea is do not use higher frequency in circuit than necessary. Okay, so with this, I'd like to end my discussion. So again, please help by like and subscribe. Thank you so much.